So how do Americans feel about Israel's impending plans to extend sovereignty over the West Bank? Well, hundreds are turning out to make their voices heard in opposition, and our Mike Wagenheim is at one of these protests in New York City. So Mike, what is the mood out there right now? How many protesters are actually on the streets? Well, rather than tell you, Natasha, I think we'll show you here. There's actually uh, two protests going on. The main one here in an Arab neighborhood in Brooklyn, the Palestinian side. If we can turn the camera around here, large contingent of Arabs of Palestinians uh, uh, origin out here protesting today, not only against Israeli plans for possible application of sovereignty in Judea and Samaria, the West Bank, but also chants going up of we don't want no two-state, we want 1948, which is basically the erasure of the state of Israel. We've also talked to some more people peaceful protesters out here today who say they simply want peace. They blame the Israeli government and the Palestinian government for not being able to come to an agreement here and find a way forward. Meanwhile, across the street here, we see on this side of the street a small contingent of Israeli of Jewish protesters out here as well. We spoke with one who said again, we just want peace, but others are saying no, all the land is ours, the Palestinians have no right to it whatsoever. So really from both sides, we're seeing moderates and we're seeing extremists, really a reflection, Natasha, I guess of the society as a whole, both in Israel and the Palestinian territories and for that matter, other parts of the world. Well, so I mean, this is New York City, obviously there is a much larger showing uh, for the people of the Palestinian territories, you know, and, and it's interesting to see how small that crowd is. Why do you think that's the case in terms of uh, pro-Israel supporters? Well, there's not many Israel supporters out here, I think, because this protest was mainly organized not by Israelis, not by Jews, but by Palestinians. So this is really their protest with a small counter protest on the other side. I think as a whole, America has more problems right now, Natasha, than dealing with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Mm -hmm. I think within our universe, within the media, within the Jewish or the Arab communities, yes, it's a big deal. Within larger society, many more problems, many more conflicts to deal with than the Israeli-Palestinian conflict has been dragging on now for 70-some years. Uh, people have grown tired of it, and unless you're really involved with it in the day-to-day, -day, it's really not more than a passing right. point anymore. So, so talk to us a little bit about American officials and what they're saying today in regards uh, to, you know, these plans not going through of annexing parts of the West Bank. For the most part, uh, American officials on the uh, Republican side are trying to push through at least some small measure of the application of sovereignty, annexation, if you will, of parts of the West Bank. It's a Republican priority, Israeli expansion uh, into the Palestinian territories, either for political, religious reasons, or both. Meanwhile, on the Democrat side, they really want to try to keep alive the hope of a two-state solution. Uh, that's been the main focus of the Democratic Party in terms of the Israeli relationship, secure Israel, make sure that the uh, defense aid continues to go to Israel. Very few Democrats, only 12, signed a letter, uh, both uh, uh, Congress people and senators, saying that uh, uh, conditions for aid uh, should be applicable if Israel applies sovereignty to parts of the West Bank. Everybody else says we need to keep defending Israel and, and uh, give them aid. But Democrats as a whole say that Israel is not well advised to continue their plans to apply sovereignty in the West Bank. They say it's ill-fated, it will not secure Israel in the long term, and mm -hmm. Israel needs to go back to the negotiating table with the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. It's only, of course, in the last couple days that the Palestinians have said, yes, we would like to go back to the negotiating table. Republicans see it as simply a stalling tactic, as Palestinians hope that Donald Trump will be out of the White House soon, and maybe they can get a friendlier voice in the Democratic nominee, Joe Biden. Now, Mike, Israel has been in close contact with U.S. officials regarding these annexation plans. Uh, we passed the deadline, obviously, but can we expect to see a continuation of talks on this topic? There's no doubt whatsoever. July 1st was never, as Benny Gantz said, a date that was really written in stone. We take a look at, Marie, if we could, at some of the protests still going on here, just to give you a bigger picture of what's happening here. Uh, July 1st was never a date set in stone. This is a long-term, complicated plan. And I think the, the, the Trump administration, if you want to look at it less cynically than some, this is what they were pushing for, to use the leverage of Israeli sovereignty in the West Bank as a measure to try to bring the Palestinians back to the negotiating table. At least that's what the Trump administration said on the front end of things, get back to the table, we can use the plan as a All basis, right, but let's start talking and see how we can work it out. So this was never okay. a firm date, and this is going to go way past July 1st. All right, Mike, thank you so much for joining us.